What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of the Nine Finger Kitchen. My name is Dan Johnson, and if you've never heard of me before, I only have nine fingers. So that's why everything I do is Nine Finger Chronicles. That's my podcast, Nine Finger Kitchen. You get the theme here. So um, today is episode number one, and uh, I don't know why, but I'm just a little bit nervous uh, here. I've cooked all these meals several times before, and I thought to myself, there's not really a, uh, a show out there or uh, cooking instructions or whatever of simple meals. Everything that I've seen uses call fat and deer buttholes, <laughs> all this crazy uh, parts of the animal that pretty much just stay in the gut pile uh, with me. The, the craziest thing I think you're ever gonna see on this show is probably using some heart. Now we may expand from that as the show gets rocking and rolling and uh, I expand my particular taste um, in, in wild game, but you're gonna see venison, you're gonna see turkey, you're gonna see uh, a fish, uh, all, all the stuff that I do throughout the year, even mushrooms. So all the stuff that I do throughout the year as far as hunting, and I guess if you wanna call me a gatherer too, uh, that's what we're gonna be covering in this, uh, in this show. So today, we're gonna be eating this guy right here. This is my 2020 buck shot him from the ground walking to uh, where I was gonna set up. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna be eating this guy today. I'm gonna set him back here real quick. And uh, we're gonna start things off with uh, a recipe that is really simple, but my family destroys this meal. There are no leftovers whenever I cook this. So I have to make sure I don't eat it um, when we're done cooking it today. And I got to save some for my kids because this is, a, this is one of these uh, uh, recipes that I love, my kids love. And like I said, there's not a lot of, um, not a lot of leftovers. So we're just going to kind of get right into it. And we're going to talk about the, just the simple preparation. These meals that you're going to see are real simple, right? Uh, they don't take a lot of time to... Uh, cook. And if they do take a lot of time to cook, it's something that you can put in the oven or a crock pot and walk away from and then come back to them. You know, like you got chores to do, or you got to do some laundry, or you got to take the kids to dance or whatever, whatever you got to do. Uh, we're also going to be talking about uh, some drinks here. Uh, we're going to be talking about wine, beer, maybe a mixed drink or two, depending on the occasion. I'm going to cover the ingredients. Um, and today, we're kicking off with meatloaf. And uh, whenever I, I think of meatloaf, I think of that uh, Will Ferrell movie where he's just yelling meatloaf, Mom, where's the meatloaf? <laughs> and, uh, uh, so I felt like that, this is a good place to start, right? So I got to cover the ingredients real quick here for you guys. Um, I use two pounds of venison, ground venison. Now, when I take my deer to the locker, I always have them add just a little bit of fat to, uh, to the ground. And what that does is it allows it to be a little bit more adhesive when, when you cook it. Um, we have a white onion here. We're gonna use half of that. We have one tablespoon of garlic salt, one, ta uh, one teaspoon of garlic salt, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, two eggs, one cup of oats, and of course, everybody's favorite bacon. Uh, and uh, that's what we're going to be uh, starting off. So the first thing I'm going to do here is we're going to prepare the meatloaf. And I have this, this uh, package of bacon here. First thing I'm going to do is cut it in half. Just cut it in half and just that's it, right? The next thing that we're doing here is we are going to throw the ground beef or the ground, excuse me, the ground venison into the mixing pot here. I'm going to add... My, whoa, my two eggs. And again, the eggs, um, depending on how big your family is and how um, much of this you make, I usually go for one egg per pound of meat, All right? And I typically never measure anything. So when I say one, you know, one teaspoon of garlic salt, you know, I just add a little bit of garlic salt I add uh, some Worcestershire sauce, a, a, roughly a, a tablespoon here, and uh, this gives it a pretty unique flavor. Now, when I was a kid, 
My only experience with wild game was jerky and like summer sausage and uh, you know, the real, the real simple things that everybody had at hunt camps or anything and maybe a little bit of ground. Like we would, we would sometimes replace the ground, uh, uh, the ground, uh, you know, hamburger and we'd use some venison like in spaghetti or beef burgers. And it wasn't until, oh, to be honest with you, it wasn't until recently that I started actually trying and expanding outside of the ground, you know, into the stakes, into the back straps. And I'm probably just like every, everybody else. When I would go and try to cook wild game, especially venison, I would overcook the shit out of it and it would taste chewy and the flavors weren't right. So in the past three or four years, I would say that I've gotten much better at, uh, much better at uh, cooking wild game just from slowing down and you know getting the meat to room temperature then cooking it then you know a meat thermometer might be one of the best purchases I've ever made when it comes to uh, cooking wild game all right this is going into the mix here so the last thing that we're adding here is old-fashioned oats and you can get these at any grocery store um, some people use breadcrumbs I am a fan of using uh, old-fashioned oats and I use one cup give or take in there and uh, that's it that's how we put it together now I've washed my hands just so everybody knows the best way to do this is just get in here and mix it up by hand really good and uh, this shouldn't take too terribly long. Just get all the, all the flavors here mixed into each other. Now, I'm not gonna wash my hands quite yet. But now, what we got here, we got our mix. Now here is our tray, or what we're gonna be cooking, the actual meatloaf in. Now, everybody loves bacon. And I'm a fan of, that's, and this is why I cut it in half, because one strip of bacon lays pretty fits pretty much the, the width of this, of this dish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bacon and I'm gonna layer it in the bottom of this pan. And that's gonna create, this. the bottom is actually gonna be the top. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna flip this container, I'm gonna drain some of the grease out of it, and then I'm gonna flip it over uh, and just let it set and rest for a couple minutes before I start uh, cutting it up, all right? So I got a second layer of bacon in there. We got to leave a little bit of room because there's going to be a sauce that goes across the top of it um, when, we're, when it's all said and done. Uh, and uh, we're going to make that here next. So that, my friends, is what the, the meatloaf looks like going into the oven. I have my oven set for 400 degrees and it's going to go in there for about 40 to 45 minutes. You may have to check it. Um, some ovens run warm, some ovens run cold, and you might be able to uh, um, get away with cooking it faster or slower depending on, on the temperature. But one thing that I always do before I, I take it out is I'll make a slit in it just to see if it's cooked all the way. I always like to double check. So uh, that is the first part uh, is done. Like I said, very simple. I don't know how long we've been recording here, but uh, these, these recipes are, uh, you know, I got a family of five here. So I'm feeding myself, my wife. Uh, we have dance, we have activities, we have all this other stuff going on. And uh, I like my recipes to be really quick or if they're not quick, we can set them aside, go do something and uh, come back to them later. So this is gonna go in the oven and uh, then we're gonna make the sauce. I'd say about uh, five minutes to 10 minutes, somewhere in that time frame before we take it out of the oven. I like to put a sauce on the top of it. And uh, it's a really basic sauce. And it's like, <laughs> if you're looking for some kind of culinary adventure or breakthrough, this is definitely not the, uh, the show that uh, you're gonna find that in. But this, uh, 
this sauce has been handed down to me through generations of meatloaf cookers in my family. And it's simple. Ketchup, mustard, Worcestershire salt, or Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire whatever, whatever this stuff is, Worcestershire uh, sauce, brown sugar, and this, uh, this little secret ingredient that I've been schooled on uh, in the past. It's called Grill Mates Smokehouse Maple Seasoning. And I wish you guys could smell this because it is ridiculously, it smells ridiculously good. And as far as the measures, like I said, I, I really don't measure too much of anything. I just kind of throw it all together. But if you're looking for measurements, I usually use about a cup of ketchup, uh, a cup of mustard, uh, one tablespoon of brown sugar, uh, one teaspoon of the Worcestershire sauce, and then another teaspoon of this smokehouse, uh, smokehouse maple. All right. And we're going to put it together. So about a cup of ketchup. Mm, that looks like a cup and give or take a cup of mustard there you go that looks great uh, some Worcestershire sauce there you go whoa forget that and then I don't want to put too much brown sugar in because then it gets too sweet So about a tablespoon of the brown sugar. And then a couple sprinkles, uh, something real, I think it's, uh, I might want to measure this out because this has a lot of salt in it and I don't want to make it too salty here. So a teaspoon of that. So now all we got to do is mix this up. Uh, the look of it isn't going to look too appetizing, but the taste is going to be really good. It's uh, it's going to be sweet. It's going to go good on that on that meatloaf. And there's always a little extra. My wife always likes it when I make a little extra, so that she can use it as kind of a dipping sauce uh, over top of or you know, lay it over top of the, her slice. My kids like it too, so. Let's see, what does it need here? It's exactly how it should taste. So, like I said, I'm gonna set this aside and then it is gonna go over top of the meatloaf with about 10 to, uh, 10 to five minutes left in the cooking. And then it's gonna, you know, kind of create uh, Actually, I'm going to put it on. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm going to put it on the meatloaf at some point. So um, then we'll cut it up and use it as kind of a, a little sauce on the side too. One of the most important things uh, of being a father of three is to know the right kind of booze to have with your meal. <laughs> and uh, uh, in this house, we drink a we drink a good amount of wine. My wife loves wine. I actually uh, like a lot of wine, uh, different kinds, whites, reds, whatever. But I was doing some research on uh, what kind of wine goes good with meatloaf. And my wife picked out a Zinfandel, right? So you can, uh, something that would pair nicely with a, uh, with a, a good venison meatloaf would be a Zinfandel, uh, like what we have here. We also have Merlots and Pinot Noirs are uh, two or three different wines that go good with meatloaf. So uh, I know that uh, when my wife gets back, she is gonna pour a glass of this. Also, uh, as far as beer is concerned, um, I personally am not a huge fan of IPAs, but I know a lot of people are. However, Bell's out of Michigan, uh, Too Hard a Dale, might be one of my favorite beers uh, to, to drink. It's a, it's a hearty beer. It's a good beer. And uh, I like drinking it with my meatloaf. So if you're going to drink a beer, may I recommend some Bell's Too Hard a Dale? I know the guys out of Michigan are cheering right now. But here's where, here's where it gets a little dangerous, right? And... Uh, <laughs> um, of all the poisons that I put in my body over the course of a year, 
bourbon is by far my favorite, right? And uh, it's a shame that I'm even going to talk about a mixed drink right now. And I typically don't make this drink while I'm eating my food, but uh, this is more of a dessert that I'm gonna have a couple of these drinks after. Uh, I eat my meatloaf today, uh, and uh, I'm gonna make an old fashioned for you. Uh, probably, it is, I'm not gonna say probably, it is my favorite type of mixed drink um, that you can make. And to all the guys, out of Kentucky who think that they have the best bourbon, watch out. Um, this distillery is, oh, just a couple miles from my house. And in one of their last uh, awards that they won, they beat out a whole bunch of Kentucky bourbon. So I hope I don't start a little state war right there um, by saying that, but we, ha we have the best corn in the, in the United States. And with the best corn comes the best bourbon. So. Uh, Definitely give this a try. So here's what we're going to do. Making an old-fashioned is pretty simple. Bitters, some bourbon cherries. These, uh, this is act, this, these cherries are actually made by Woodford Reserve, and uh, they're soaked in bourbon barrels, right? So, and some sugar, right? So old-fashioned, pretty simple. We're going to give a couple shakes of the bitters into the glass. We are gonna put a couple cherries, we'll put a cherry, two cherries into each glass. We're gonna put a pinch of sugar in there and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this fork mash the cherries up so some of that flavor gets into this now when i say this is a dangerous uh this is a dangerous drink they're so good and i'm such a huge fan of them that uh, uh you can easily go through about 14 of them in a night and then the next thing you know you're waking up with a little bit of a headache uh, uh the next morning and that's why I don't drink these during the hunting season because it's very important for me to get up uh, to get up early. So we've we've got our bitters, we've put our sugar in, we got the cherries in, and ice. I'm gonna put a little ice, big ice ball in there, and then we're gonna take some orange peel. All right. Now these aren't pretty like they you get in a bar but it gives it some good flavor, some good aromas. I'm gonna put a little bit more in here. There you go. Then what we do is, again, I'm not a measurer, so we're gonna put a little bit of bourbon in there up to the top of the ice. And I'm making two because I got a camera guy who said he wants one too. There we go. Then we're gonna take this knife, stir it around a little bit. I'm making a mess, but that's okay. That looks good. That looks good. I almost swore. That's delicious. I love these things. Um, so with the dinner, I like a Bell's Too Hard Ale. My wife likes a Zinfandel, a Merlot, or a Pinot Noir. And uh, post meal, we're sitting in the recliner, watching some kind of kid show, drinking uh, old fashions. So uh, uh, please drink responsibly. With this meatloaf, uh, one of my favorite side dishes is basically mashed potatoes. And we're not going uh, out and we're not boiling a whole bunch of potatoes and peeling them and, and making homemade mashed potatoes, although my grandma makes really good homemade mashed potatoes. We're using some instant stuff today. Uh, really simple, goes great with the meatloaf. We're going to take this and we're going to put two cups of water in the microwave for about two minutes just to get it really hot and warm, and then we'll add the flakes in. Put 
Got some hot water here. Pretty simple. Dump it in. Take the old whisk, whisk all this up. And there you go, my friends. All right, so now by this time, the sauce on the top of the meatloaf should be good to go. We're gonna bring it out of the oven. We're just gonna let it rest on top of the oven for you know a handful of minutes. Then we're gonna take it out, slice it up, and we're gonna eat it. All right. Oh yeah. Now that's gonna rest for just a little bit. All right, so now uh, we're gonna plate it. I'm telling you guys, this is uh, ridiculously good. We're gonna get... It's cooled just a bit, makes it a little bit easier to work with. So what I like to do is I like to take a scoop of the potatoes make a little room for some corn put the corn right on top then I pull out a chunk of this and 90% of the time it falls apart Lay that, yep, there it went, right on the side. And then I'll take a little bit of the sauce here, sprinkle that over the top, and that is what's for supper tonight. So that's venison meatloaf at its finest, one of uh, my family's favorite recipes with mashed potatoes and corn. Uh, we're gonna have a couple more old fashions we're going to have a couple beers and, uh, well, I don't know if we're going to have a couple beers and a couple old fashions and a couple glasses of wine, but, uh, I might have a bottle of wine or a bottle of wine. I might have a, uh, uh a glass of wine with, uh, the dinner tonight. And then I might wash it down with another old fashioned before my kids get home from school. And, uh, man, there we go. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Um, this episode one was a little rough. If you ask me, but we're going to be doing a lot more of these uh, here in the next couple weeks. I think the next, uh, the next episode is going to be walleye fish tacos with a mango coleslaw. Uh, I'm a huge taco fan. So fish tacos, they're like my, you know, I don't know. I love them. I love them to death. I love tacos. Um, we're going to be doing heart fajitas. I got a whole book here full of recipes that I'm going to be um, thrown out towards you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Um, be sure to subscribe to the Sportsman's Nation YouTube channel. Be sure to follow on the Instagram, Sportsman's Nation and the Nine Finger Chronicles. And uh, just stay tuned for more recipes coming out of the Nine Finger Kitchen. Enjoy. <laughs>